Hey, Josh. Brandon, hello. Louise, Nisha, hello. Hello, hello. hello. All right. Thanks, Brandon. I'll go ahead and paste a link to the agenda in the chat. Okie doke. Get a haircut, Josh. Maybe you had it last week. Many hairs were cut. Many hairs were cut and even a face shave too. Right. Yeah, you just did the lot. I have not made it that far. I have a hairdresser in the family and I only like going to her and she's been busy. So it's been much of my wife's dismay that my hair looks like this, but I will only go back because uh, the person down the street, if they ever do my hair, I end up looking like somebody from the Beatles. Um, so my wife's at the point where she's like, go get it done there and just leave it a little longer so that my aunt can correct it. It's quite a dilemma. It is quite, it's one of, one of life's many. The dilemmas get easier when you have left hair, you just start shaving the beard and you just keep going around and you don't stop until you get to the other side. I never used to mind, you know, when I, lived, when I lived in New York City, there was a sign out. It was like $2 haircuts. And I went in and got it one day and it was right before a wedding. And I horribly regretted it. Now I'm a little less conservative on uh, how much money I spend on <laughs> my haircuts. It's like $2 before a wedding. This is a one-way logic gate. If, if there's something important, then yeah, I, I definitely get Spend that. the money. Um, Spend yeah. the money. I got what I paid for, as my wife aptly put it. Okie doke. Shall we? Shall we get into it? All right. I will again post the link. Please add your names to the attendee list. Hello and welcome to the working group reference types in OCI. I said reference types working group. I kind of said it backwards. Today is uh, February twenty uh, second, Tuesday, February twenty second, twenty twenty two. I should have known that from all the palindrome conversations I've seen around the place, but I apparently missed it. Um, hello and welcome. Please add your names to the attendee list. Uh, this meeting will be recorded um, and posted to YouTube afterwards. So please be considerate to everybody around you and uh, choose your words carefully. We're all in support of each other here and trying to help each other in this working group. Um, I see Brandon's nominated himself. Hopefully that's self-nominated. I can't actually see that, but um, thank you, Brandon, for notes. Really appreciate that. We have two agenda items at, uh, at the moment. If there are any subsequent items that people want to raise, please add it to the agenda and we'll try and get through it as we have time. Uh, but for the named agenda items, we'll go through them first. Um, and I guess we'll kick it off. I won't share my screen because I, I assume somebody else will need to do as we go through the next things. Okay, so first agenda item, uh, go through bucketed list of use cases and generalize them. Nisha can lead um, with the outcome of submit PR to reference types uh, working group repo when done. Would you like to take it away, Nisha, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, I managed to go through just one section of that bucket bucketed list, and that was the filtering part. Um, and thanks to, uh, I think it was Brandon who made the bucketed list, or was it Lucky? Thanks a lot for that. Um, it was it was very easy for me to go and uh, shrink this out. And I have uh, four questions that I would like the community, I would like some community feedback for. Uh, question one, have we agreed that our primary artifact is the container image? I think we, we do because we want to ensure backwards compatibility, but um, yeah, uh, I'll open up the floor to that. I think it's safe to say yes. We've 
had this discussion in distribution. And I do think this group is interesting because we're talking about types related to, so we're, we're inherently talking about different types, but I think we always must uh, consider the, the container image. Okay. Um, would that be uh, something that is under user stories or would that be goal under the goals for this working group is to uh, make sure that um, the primary artifact is the container image and it will not be touched? I'm what do you, sorry, what do you mean by touched? Um, and also, I, I would think goals to answer oh. your question as I understand. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're, you're right. Maybe touch is too strong a word. Uh, will not be impacted. Or would it be more specific to say that the container runtime will not be impacted? That when somebody upgrades to these new potential APIs, their image workflows will not be impacted. Is that what you're yeah. getting to? I think that's a goal. I think that's a big goal. And I think we also last week talked about backwards compat and I think it's like implied there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it could be both a user story uh, and a goal. I think that are we, I think we're trying to get the user stories to define our goals. So. Does anyone have any uh, additions, objections? Yes, Lucky? No, I think in thinking about the, the space, anchoring it off container images makes it the easiest for us to have a conversation and, and rationalize it, but that's just my opinion. So I agree with what Josh was saying. And I'm gonna say, if we're talking about reference types, the thing that we ultimately go back and reference is gonna be a container image, but whether we're talking about backwards compatibility and other things along those lines, I think we've got a lot of other items in our user stories that should cover a bunch of this stuff like Josh is saying. Okay, um, so a follow-up question would be, um, do we call these, do we call all of the things stored in a registry, a registry object? And do we have a specialized object called a container image? Okay, so we've we've just decided that the um, the primary uh, we do not want to impact uh, the container workflow. So does that mean that the other things that we are trying to store in the registry are called registry? I mean, what do we call those? Do we want to keep them separate or do we want to generalize them? Okay, I got uh, Lucky first and then Brad. I was just gonna ask Nisha, what, what problem are we trying to solve with this? Are we just trying to solve just the vernacular that we're using and make it consistent across the user stories? Yes, uh, I and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because um, I would, I mean, our objective here is to generalize the user stories and we have a number of dupes, I think, mm -hmm. that talk about the same things, but uh, for container images and artifacts separately. And sometimes we have user stories that talk about them in general. So I, I want to find out whether we reference these two things separately or in general? 
And I think we have, my opinion is that we have some user stories that do want uh, all these things to fall under the general like registry objects, but we do have user stories that are specifically for container images. So my take on it myself, <clears throat> excuse me, is today OCI has a separate little category for artifacts, even though they kind of get implemented as a container image manifest with some other things in there. So as OCI, we've already kind of broken everything other than the container image out a little bit, but not quite. So I would just kind of classify everything else right now as just an artifact. So whether it's an SBOM, a signature, attestation, whatever we're putting into a registry, whatever we're throwing in there, Helm chart put all those things under the artifact label for right now so we're not being too picky and realize that a container image right now is, to some people, it is an artifact. To other people, it is the primary thing we store in a registry. So could be a subset, could be a parallel item, depending on who you talk to. Uh, Sajay, you have your hand up. Hi, um, I think I kind of agree with what Brandon is saying there, which is there is a divergence of what a container image and an artifact is. But for the use case, I think talking about the container image might be a, an easy way to define, to validate this signature on this container. So do so things, things like that, or store this reference type with this container. The other thing that I wanted to raise a point around is the vernacular regarding backward compatibility. I don't think we have agreed that everything that we propose from this group would be backward compatible, which means that we won't break anything. For example, the image spec did introduce the requirement for a media type field, which might break certain clients, even though it was a minor bump, right? So the, the goal from what I understood was to define how clients may be, um, how backward how clients that are not using this new feature can still make changes deterministically uh, and kind of implement the backward compatibility features. Um, we, are we saying that there will not be any impact to any client or is it more about making sure that we have guidance for backward compatibility or just defining backward compatibility in general? So, my takeaway from last week's meeting was that backwards compatibility was a primary goal. Um, whether that had to do with container runtimes or development workflow or um, just in, in general, people using container images, um, I don't know, uh, that, that seemed to me like a secondary thing, but it seems like we have room to, we have room to maneuver around that uh, in the sense that we can specifically say that developer workflow will not be affected. Yeah, for me, my ideal is that any users and servers, so clients or server on the registry side, if they are following the OCI spec, would not be impacted by the stuff we're doing negatively. Um, but it doesn't mean that somebody doesn't incorrectly implement something out there and could see an issue. We, we've seen plenty of those out in the field already. And we just kind of do our best job we can to minimize that. Okay, so it, it seems to me that uh, as, as far as naming is concerned, uh, someone, I, I think at this point, uh, when we talk about container images, we are specifically, uh, when we're specifically concerned about developer workflow uh, not being impacted. But in general, all of these things that we store in the registry can be considered as objects or artifacts. Sajay, you have your hand up. 
Oh no, that's that's regarding the backward compat. But you can continue with this one regarding the naming for the type. Um. So, Sajay, would you agree that um, backwards compatibility would be specific for a developer workflow and not the container image itself? Yeah, I'm. I'm actually. Um... I want to probably keep the conversation open for possible changes that improve the specification rather than saying that nothing will change for old clients. So backward compatibility in my head was actually a bucket, which we define how clients would implement it. I was not under the impression that it already made a goal that no existing clients or developer workflows would be, would not be impacted. Um, so it's, it's more like, let's talk through the scenarios of, what the impact might or might not be in the bucket of backward compatibility. That's what the whole thing was. And definitely as a registry operator, I don't think I want to impact the, the clients negatively, but let's say, for example, uh, if they can actually get reference types in the data field, that would affect or not affect, but it does, does tell clients how to kind of reason it, move with it and things like that. So uh, to me, it's been a bucket till now, but um, I think, we should at least have the conversation on the scenarios once we identify the scenarios for backward combat or how we might not impact it in any way. So I guess- yeah, Brandon and Lefty. Yeah, I guess to kind of go on, on that a little bit, Sajay, if I, I think the goal is to make sure we don't have a breaking change. And so if the client has got reference type support and it talks to registry, it doesn't have it, there should be a way the client detects that and then doesn't do something that would break an existing registry that way. And similarly, if a registry has reference type support and is talking to a client that doesn't have it, nothing on that registry should break that client one way or another. Um, and I think we can still do forward moving changes that you're thinking of and still maintain that compatibility. Lucky? Um. Thank you. Is it okay if I make a proposal about these use cases? Because I gave it quite some thought. I thought maybe if I made a suggestion here, we could move this conversation forward. Go ahead, Lucky. So, you know, after I did the grouping um, in the doc, I made some notes about the grouping. And before I went too far, I just wanted to lay out what I think are best next steps. And then maybe we can either agree or, or change change it. A couple of observations is I wanted to come up with a fixed set of personas um, because there was a personas and then refactor them all into a set of personas because I did read security vendor, user developer, artifact producer, security admin, tool writer, registry operator. So I'm trying to figure out how I can synthesize those down into a, a set. Some of them I've already aggregated and, and fixed. So I was going to go and just class in under each bucket, put each sub persona and then have them bucketed into sub bucketed into each sub persona i don't know if that's useful do we think that's useful just step one using a standard set of personas and then sub buckets per persona or that was be my first suggestion uh, so i am a little reluctant to uh use personas in like and sub persona simply because I feel like all of these personas have overlapping um, needs or wants. Okay, so let's for, not do so that. For let's, so for what's... example, oh, okay. Well, no, I was I'm, just that, gonna... That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna else? argue, I, that's fine. Does anybody else okay. have any? I won't yeah. do that. that I have a couple of other suggestions, if that's not, is what, what I hear from you saying, Nisha, is it worth it to go through and replace the wording of a stored object and registry object to be succinctly container image and artifact, which groups SBOM signatures and other things that aren't container images, and then a reference, which an artifact would reference, a reference would be a reference between an artifact and a container image. Would that be useful to clean those up or just leave them in their current? Because I'm trying to think of what's the outcome we're trying to drive here with these personas. Are we going to take them as is, scrub them, put them in a PR and then kind of look over them? Because we've done a lot of deduping right now. Um, it's, I really want to get 
make some movement on this and and um but so i'm looking for succinct next steps so that what i can you know work with everybody to get them get them done because i see some questions about how do we start rationalizing proposals so trying to just give some ideas here to push through brandon if we're thinking about terminology i would say let's document up top that we are uh, as our group defining an artifact to be anything that can be stored in a registry along the lines of signature s bomb and yeah. container image so include container image as a possible artifact that's just one of the many things and a reference type is anything that can refer from one artifact to another artifact. Okay. I don't want to limit us to just container images because there are situations like signing an S bomb or signing a Helm chart. Okay. I agree. Um, uh, I was going to propose that we have a general term called artifact and a specialized artifact called container image. Does that sound good, Brandon? I think that's fine. And then would we just put a glossary of terms at the top of the, the use cases doc, just so that we're concrete there on what those things mean? Sounds good. Shall we move okay. on? So yeah, where, where do we want to get to? Do we want to take these and just take them as is? I don't think there's too much value in having people's names against specific use cases anymore, but I don't know, is that, do, should we keep people's names there? Um, and then where do we want to actually agree on which ones are we're going to say are valid use cases for this working group working group to consider? Do you want that to be in the Google Doc or do you want to go start to hash it out over a, a PR and we do that review? Let's do a PR. I think we have enough. Uh, I can submit one to start off and then folks can comment on it. Okay. So I will I will update. I think the only other thing is there's a bunch of comments and the Google Doc copies comments from things that I copied. I don't know if it's worth me just copying them to some other doc then putting them back without comments because I think a lot of the comments are probably from the first pass and then yeah. at least scrubbing those comments because I don't like leaving dangling dom comments on <laughs> docs because it looks like the things are unanswered and unresolved. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll get the glossary and get it into a state that you can go put it into a PR. And then, you know, maybe next week, do we just go over and say which, which is in, which is out? And at least then move, move user stories out of being considered. Well, I, I just want to say that actually the fact that we have um, decided that the artifact is the generalized object and the container image is the specialized object helps us uh, shorten the user stories. So for example, yeah. we can now shorten all of the container image, SBOM, sign signatures, all of that can just be artifact. So we can just have one user story that says, uh, as a user, I want to uh, query an artifact based on uh, tag and digest. Mm -hmm. And that reduces the number of user stories under the filtering bucket. Okay, so I can I can take a pass at getting the glossary, condensing all the different things under the terminology that we've established there, just to clean it all up, um, and then we can get it in a PR, and then we can discuss. Does that sound like the best next steps? I would also throw out a next step for everybody here. I, I hesitate to go through and say let's just get rid of all the comments out there, but may it make sense to have people that have comments on their items to go over there and look at and see if you can self-resolve it. So and let me, before you do that, let me just, I'm going to copy the content out and then lose all the metadata and then put it back into the Google doc. So it's commentless because I think if I actually resolve all the comments now, it's going to resolve the parent comment. I don't know how the, the commenting works anymore. Um, but I'm but thinking when I if, copied, I'm thinking if the comment is to the person that wrote the bullet, if, that person can go uh -huh. through and look at and see, is it resolved to ourselves? We can go through and resolve a bunch of these things. And that way, if there's any important comments that we don't want to resolve yet, when you do your copy back and forth and lose that metadata, okay, it might be, might be useful just to get that back out of it and just be able to say, oh, we don't need these. Or are you okay. saying we're going to somehow preserve the comments some other way? No, nope, I'm not. Okay. I was just saying on the bucketed list, the, pre the comment preservation would be under the unbucketed list 
as they stand oh, today. But okay. I guess I guess we can go and resolve the comments under the bucketed list because they got carried over when I copied them down. So if anybody, I guess, go go have a look at your comments, clean them up, and if there's anything that we need there, yeah. If you're I'm just happy to bucket, do it that way. if you're only doing half the document, then that that's a different concern. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't going to take the unsorted comments there. But the problem is now, if everybody goes and updates the unsorted list, I kind of said they're frozen in time. Don't keep updating them there because I'm not going to repaste them back into the bucketed list. So I guess in that case, it makes sense for people to review and say, do they still stand regardless of the list and update them in the bucketed list? <laughs> Sorry, hopefully I'm not making this too complicated. We... Oui. Okay, uh, shall we move on then? Sounds yeah. good. Okay. Um, I got some actions. Thanks, Nisha. No worries. Thanks, everyone. That was nice. Uh, <laughs> so um, the next question I have, I don't know if we resolved this in the last meeting, was whether um, a UI for looking at artifacts and container images is part of this proposal. And the reason I bring that up is because we have one user story about uh, viewing top level container images in the registry through tags, but only see the references as a selected detail. And uh, Steve is not here. So uh, I wonder if that's something that we should consider, Brandon? I'll say we, we shouldn't be creating a UI, but we should enable anybody that wants to create a UI on top of this. So if they've got the ability to make one, let them, let them make it, but not us making it. Okay. Um, in that case, I think just the general querying user stories that we have should be enough. Or are we missing anything? I think it's the general user stories are enough. Okay. To facilitate the creation of a UI that fulfills that user case, use case. Anyone have objections? No, I, I think we totally agree. I don't think anybody wants to create the UI at this point unless unless somebody does want to volunteer as a reference project at this point. Okay. Then uh, I will move on. Okay, next question is, there is a user story about uh, reducing the number of tags that reference related artifacts. Uh, is reducing tag clutter a content management issue or a querying issue? I thought we had bucketed under content management last time, right? Uh, it's bucketed under query, filtering. Uh, I think this is Brandon's uh, user story. Yeah, it, it can go under a whole bunch of different places. And this is also one of those where it's a nice to have. Nice to have, I mean, um, I guess I'm wondering, um, is that something, uh, is, that's a user story, but it seems more like, you know, it, it's something a user would not like, would not want to deal with, or would, you know, it, prefer if there was like a straightforward way to handle. It's a user story where if we implement reference types and give these to the users, it's one of the things they will come back to me and complain about. And so I'm trying to avoid people coming back to me and complaining but it's also one of those where if it comes out and we just say, hey, that's the way it works. There's no way around that. Then sorry, we did the best we could. Yeah, this is one of those things I think is uh, kind of related to everything uh, or at least uh, related to user story and content management helps both ways. Um, I'm finally tired of filtering though. You're fine leaving it in filtering. Okay. Anyone have objections? Josh okay. said he couldn't couldn't find it specifically. 
Yeah, I guess maybe as we're going through this, uh, I, you may have already said it. I just, I could not, I did a control F for tags and didn't know what we're talking about. Ignore, ignore. I'm taking a look at the uh, original thing real quick. I'm wondering now, was that a, was that a thing I missed? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I see it now. Reducing tag clutter is the reducing tag clutter is the thing to search. I see it. Okay, so my feeling is that that would fall under content management because uh, I would think that a proposal would allow for reducing tag clutter. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I don't care actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll there, leave it there. Going to be, it's, it's because this can be solved in different ways. You can solve this either by not creating tags. And so we're creating something else that repairs and it's just a digest. And so there's never anything in the tags database to get cluttered. You can solve this by a filter on the tag listing. You can solve it on the client side that filters this out. So because it can be solved in several different places, it's hard to say which bucket it should be in because different people will solve it different ways. <laughs> Can we be okay, careful so, so. about, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Sujay. I... Oh, can we be careful of not wording it like reduce tag clutter? That means we have assumed that tags are cluttered in some way, but we haven't chosen an implementation. So it's it's basically to make sure that we ensure that um, how we do tag filtering or how we do this is not going to create clutter or something like that, because the other one kind of in, implies that we have chosen to use tags in some way, right? Fair enough. Would it uh, would it make more sense to call this user story as um, you know a, a efficient organizing of artifacts? Okay, so I said that's that's good. Organizing means content management to me but it could be like other ways. If, if a user would like to, you know, um, interact with the registry in an organized and uh, in an organized way or user-friendly way, I guess clutter would go against that. Is the consensus to just keep it like that for now? We'll look at it later, maybe. I just did a quick rephrase to say avoiding tag clutter instead of reducing tag clutter. So I think. Okay, sounds hopefully good. Hopefully it takes care of the concern. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's all the questions I have for the filtering part. Uh, shall we move on to backwards compatibility? We are, uh, we are making good progress. I don't know. Do folks want to move on or do folks want to? Uh, call it a day. Lucky? Yeah, I was just going to suggest what what time cap do you want to put on this? Because we do have one other agenda item that I'd like to at least consider. So do you want to go for another five minutes and then give 20 minutes for the second item? You're on mute. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, no that's that's up to uh, folks. So, do the second. Um, I would I would move on to the second item just for discussion, because it's a top level thing that maybe resolving it now would help us um, move forward with our conversation. So the question is. Um, when we look at propose when we look at the proposals do we look at them do we take a particular use case and see if the proposals um, solve for that use case or do we take a, the proposal and see if it solve what use cases it solves for and what use cases it doesn't solve for uh, lucky oh lucky's got a send out josh Sorry, um, 
so <laughs> I don't want to go back to the last one, but I just want to make sure are we is this list are like as we're going through that Nisha making some changes like artifact versus image are we going to get this back into the repo was my one question like what's I guess like what is our when are we done with that doc I guess is my question um I'll start with that and then I have a response to your what you just said about proposals um so I I can submit uh, an initial PR and I guess this is done when that PR gets merged. That's the short form of it. Um, but there's also the second question, which is, uh, do I do I? Well, I guess not. Um, so does that mean? Do you want to continue forward and look at um, look at the backwards compatibility and the um, no artifact uh, schema and all of that before we move on to the next one before looking at proposals? No, let's go on. I'm just um, right. So we have 23 minutes. I think <laughs> there's more than enough to talk about once we open up the can of worms with proposals. I think let's say we run out of time. Are we just gonna like open up this list next week and like look at it forever? I know Lockie was saying something about getting it on my PR. I just want to know, are we are are we planning to like uh, get a list? Finalized? Yeah, I, I I I feel you, Josh. I think we take this, we add the glossary, we buff them up a little bit, put them against your PR, maybe just off a branch of your PR then add comments for what we think is going to be included and excluded and keep a track of the yeah. things that we're saying is not going to be covered by this working group. Get, agree on that, get it into the doc. And I'd like to like start that ASAP. Okay. Let's get that up. I, hopefully I can dedicate some time today to scrub it, get to the PR, but then async comments on the thing, get that merged as, as Nisha was saying. And then, you know, the second part of Nisha's question, I was thinking with that merged, it would be interesting to, with an accepted set of use cases, do a matrix of here's yes, no, why of whether these things are met with these different proposals that we have. Um, that was what I was thinking. And yeah, a Pfizer plus one to numbering. Yeah, and then the numbering yeah. was like, you know, filtering Sounds, one, two, three. I'm just thinking about. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I'm picturing this matrix of, you know, filtering one, two, three, dot, 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 n. And we just say, we number the use cases so we don't have to carry this big long sentences everywhere. And then there's just a canonical list to say, hey, I'm talking filtering one, which is that use case. And that use case is met in this proposal or not. So, okay. uh, yeah. oh, uh, Brandon has his hand up and then I have a proposal. I mean, I'm making a motion to move that topic of, um, looking at the making a proposal matrix till after we finish merging the use cases. Yeah, doing the matrix later, Se separate PR makes sense to me. Um, when we go through making the matrix, um, I think we're gonna to wanna to spend some time actually going over the proposals. I don't think we've really done that yet. And so spend a little bit of time running over what the proposals are, make sure everybody understands each one of the proposals and how it's, how it's implemented, not necessarily whether we like it or not, I think everybody's gonna have their own favorites. Um, I am gonna stress, cause I've gone through this one before that yes and no is not enough. It needs to be yes, no, um, it could be, but it has issues trying to implement it. Um, you know, there are challenges, you, you make some choices when you go through that. Um, and then potentially this can't do it directly, but we can push that off to a user to implement themselves. And maybe there's some other categories in there, but just kind of think through those as you're thinking at this, that there might be more than just yes, no. Yeah, I, I agree, Brandon. I don't think it would ever be just yes, no, but yes. <laughs> I think that's valuable. Thanks. Josh, you have your hand up? No, you're done. Okay. Um, all right. Um, and because we answered that question about um, 
uh, specialized artifact as container images, I think our backwards compatibility user stories are pretty succinct. So I'm gonna like uh, quickly go on to artifact schema. Um, so there's, there's a couple of things about um, blobs and layers. I did not understand uh, if the if this group had come to a consensus to, uh, a consensus on whether um, blobs and layers are a thing that we care about, considering that you know we've now said an artifact is a generic. Uh, term for things stored in a registry and a container image is a specialized artifact. So with that said, are blobs something we care about? I think depending on the solution, yes. So I will put forward that um, the blobs I mean, there are file systems out there that do not use layers um, and we still call it a blob. So I, I, so I suppose it's a solution thing. It, it's a solution to something, but I'm not sure what it is a solution to. So I'll, I'll clarify my overly short answer there. Um, some, Proposals are looking at making a new media type for how they capture artifacts. And if you design a new media type with a new layout and schema in there, deciding how you structure that becomes very important. So I think that's where they're trying to capture how we structure it needs to include an array of blobs and things like that. So I think they were going two or three steps down this path where if we don't go down that path, then we probably don't care as much because we've already inherently got blobs and layers with all the other things we've already implemented in OCI. But if we go down the path that we implement a new media type with its own schema, then we will care. But that sounds to me like we are, you know, going backwards from implementation to solving the user story. What, what user story are we trying to solve with this, you know, I want, I want the blob layout. Yeah, I, I can I can agree with you that it's getting a little bit into the weeds of implementation rather than user side. Um, I just wasn't going to fight too hard on the user stories because I figure our fights are going to come later on this project. So I figure let everybody throw whatever their own individual user stories were on there. And if they make sense to only half people, then that's the only a problem that half people have. So Steve is not on the call and I would, um, I would reach out to him to ask his opinion about this, maybe in another meeting or just on the Slack. Does that sound fair? Yeah, I know he's out this week. Okay. Anyone, can anyone speak for him or for that? Uh, for that user story? Okay. No, so but I, I think it's the, it's the right question to ask is what is the, what is the use case for, for an art, artifact producer that that's driving? That it looks more implementation detail to me. What, what is that implementation serving for the artifact producer in both those cases? I don't know. Okay, so I guess I will punt on that and ask, reach out to Steve with that question. Or move it, or Lucky, would, would it make sense to move it to next week? Yeah, well, I'll think on it and see if I can synthesize what Steve might have been saying. But yeah, we should we should definitely ask him when he gets back.
Okay. Um, so moving on, there is um, one question about, uh, I, I suppose I could shrink that down to round tripping. So the specific one is, um, oh goodness, I, I lost it. There's some. Is it the multiple artifacts referring to the same manifest? No, it was. Um, oh, as a user, I would like to know the type of artifact for each entry in a query of reference types without pulling each artifact separately. Um, Sounds like one of mine. <laughs> um, Brandon, would you like to uh, clarify yeah. that for me? Yeah, the clarification on that one is think through a scenario where you've got a security system out there that is doing daily scans on all of your artifacts out there, all your container images, and you expire them after a day, but you don't, you haven't implemented the garbage collection process yet. So after a month, you've got 30 of these, 30 of these scans sitting out there. I don't want to have to have someone go through and pull all 30 of those individual scans to find the one signature that hadn't expired yet. Especially, you know, you keep going longer and longer. It's going to go a year or something like that. So I'm just looking for a way that users, if they need to, if they've pushed a whole lot of these signatures up into the registry, that they can quickly find the one they're looking for without pulling each one of them individually. Wouldn't that fall under uh, content management though? Because it, it seems to be connected to like how, what's, what's uh, the retention, like folks wanting to define the retention pol policy on certain artifacts. Possibly. Um, this is another one of those where depending on how you implement it, it can be grouped in a different bucket. You know, if somebody says we're just going to implement it as a filter and you can filter the specific things back you want from your query, that's one and way then, of doing it. And then you can, uh, you know, delete based on some timestamp. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's it's about like uh, who, whether it's a, a registry that, um, you know, does this or whether it's uh, the client that does it. But I still think that that uh, falls under content management because uh, I'm thinking that if you want someone to be able to do this, then the ability to be able to, uh, you know, fetch metadata about these objects without, without fetching the whole object is useful there. Yeah, I'm not sure now whether, <laughs> now that I said that sentence, I'm not sure whether that's, that's a concern. So suppose you had, suppose you had a, uh, like a object that is metadata about, like specifically timestamp metadata about uh, what scans exist or um, you know, you could just fetch that one object and say, oh yeah, that's the digest that I really want and everything else can be deleted. Or those are the sets of digests that are the most recent and every all the other digests can be deleted. Yeah, it comes down to how it's implemented. And so if you implement it a different way, you might only have two references to look up because you've automatically cleared out all the other ones. It's it, it's one of those, it just depends on how you write. So it gets factored into a different bucket depending on who's implementing the solution. Okay. So why is it under artifact schema? Oh, well, no, that's a question I can't answer. <laughs> uh, do you mind if I move it to content management? I have no concern at all if you want to move it.
I think regarding the categorization, I think it's just a rough, uh, we came to rough agreement last week. I think if we just throw it on the GitHub thing, we can have that, that category argument there. Um, that's all. Yeah, I think at least for now, it seems that there's a good, I mean, there's a there's solid ground to be able to uh, organize all of these into generic user stories and be able to, you know, sub, uh, submit changes to the initial PR or like make comments on the initial PR and move forward. Because I, I, I look, I'm looking at the list right now and I do not have really any other questions, like any other clarifying questions. It seems reasonably straightforward once you have the, the glossary of terms and what we, what we are considering. Uh, uh, one issue that I have is, yeah, the, the last issue was about the blobs and the layers. Oh, Pooh, I missed one, one final question, but I'll, uh, but uh, Lucky has his hand up, so go ahead, Lucky. No, I was just gonna say, as I went through, I, it sounds, I might be pulling on the thread that you're pulling on here a little bit. The, the bucket artifact schema is by virtue, looking at the, the implementation detail. And I think the last two, um, maybe the last three are more you know, proper use cases. The first two are implementation details. I've, off, I've wondered whether this bucket should exist or whether things should go up a level and get jammed into one of the other three buckets. And I don't know, but it's, you know, it's kind of posturing a lot to say, we should put this in the actual API schema. Um, is that actually a use case? I don't know. So I've just, when thinking about this, should artifact schema exist or should everything get filtered, brought up a level and put somewhere else in one of the other three buckets? And this, in which case, this one isn't really a valid use case. It's, it's more us posturing on a, an API design through things that aren't really use cases, like you know, air quotes. That's just should this should this category exist? Should it be moved out? Because if you go and fix up Steve's to what the actual use case is, the other three I think could probably go into, you know, as a user, take the last one, Josh's one. I want to store images in one registry and signatures. That's kind of content management. If I squint. Um, you know, yeah. but we're posturing it's something has to land in the, the schema, of course, but it's really like, do we need to say that? There is a lot of stuff that needs to land in the schema here um, by virtue of the other buckets, right? Backwards compat and other things. Is this actually a real bucket or is it a fake bucket for stuff we didn't want to put in any others? Because, you know, uh, Brandon's, for example, has, it could be in filtering too. And you said it could be in content management. So that's just, you know, one thing should the artifact schema bucket really actually exist in a set of use cases? Um, because you could squint and say that everything should be in the artifact bucket and manage artifact schema bucket as well by virtue of the fact that, yeah, you're gonna to need to put something in an API to facilitate this. Yeah, I think Steve spent a lot of time looking through how to redesign what an artifact is. And so he might be mentally down that path. Yeah. Okay, uh, can we move that discussion to next week? We'll keep it in the PR Let's just put for it now. in the PR and then we'll just start to talk it out there because I feel like capture of these notes over time and then working towards the goal of getting that merged is probably, we've done a lot of finessing in the doc. I feel like it's yeah. start, time to start working towards resolution. That's just my take. Yeah. Um, so I have one last question. One, um, and this is actually regarding my own user story that I put in there, uh, which is as a user, I want to fetch the most updated um, updated artifact, I guess. Here, uh, this is where I am not really sure how much is implementation based or how much it's user story based, I guess. At this point, 
all I can say is that with the current state of affairs, I am not able to do that well. Like I don't have assurances. Um, I don't know whether what I'm pulling is most updated, even if it is, if it even is updated or not. Um, I'm looking at Marina here and um, as I as I've read the tough specification, uh, I feel like there is one thing missing in this whole is talk about registry, which is the concept of uh, streams or series or you know feeds. As it, I mean, if if we want the registry to be part of an update system, then it means that we also need to have like this concept of a feed that people subscribe to. Uh, my question is whether that whole thing is a user story in itself or uh, whether I should like find something simpler like Yeah, I guess just for context, the way I thought about um, the use of TUF in kind of this whole system is that you could use the references to, um, to basically to include TUF metadata on a registry, which, is an, which can then provide you um, things like the timeliness properties that without it having to be natively supported by the registry, right? The registry doesn't need to know what these TUF metadata pieces are doing, but um, by existing on the registry and referencing artifacts that are on the registry, you can then use them to, um, to get that, that information, um, which is just kind of how I've been thinking about it. I don't know how that relates exactly to the user story, but um, yeah. So um, if I wanted to find, well, so, I mean, uh, if I wanted to find the most updated um, artifact or product or like, something that I'm subscribing to, if I'm using the tough terms, um, that would mean that I would be, like my client will be looking for specifically timestamp metadata to find whether it's, uh, whether it's the most updated thing or not. Is, is, that, the, yeah. is that what so, you're thinking about? Okay. So, um, yeah, so um, registries are a little bit different than file systems in how you'd find, um, especially like the versioned tough metadata files. I don't know if this is going too far in the weeds for folks who aren't as familiar with tough, but um, but basically you could use the references, like you could reference from timestamp back to say root metadata. You could update that reference without having to actually mutate the um, you know the artifact that you're updating, which is the timestamp. Um, so that you just like basically upload a new timestamp, which then points to the root, and you just find that reference. And the timestamp in it is what gives you the timeliness property and makes sure it's the most recent one, as well as the, the reference. I don't know if I explained that well. Sorry, Brandon, I know you had your hand up. I understood yeah. what you said, Marina. It made sense. Brandon? Yeah, I was. So it does make sense that Tuff does it with the timestamps and that. But that's probably just because I've been looking at tough for too long. Um, I, I was going to throw the question back at Nisha. Do we need to capture this as we want to know that there's a whole series or an order of artifacts, or do we just want to capture that we want the most recent one? Is there value to going back and finding the fifth most recent one? Yeah, uh, I did actually put another user story about that, which is bisecting bills. So it does make sense to me that you'd want to like have a range of timestamps and you'd want to go back uh, and forth between them. You'd want to implement something like uh, rollbacks and um, save, you know, uh, tombstone updates that didn't work and move on and try the next update, th those kind of things. Um, it, Nisha, it we're just a little over time. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to let let it be known. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, my suggestion would be to um, maybe move this to 
just keep the simplified one, the simplified user story that I want the most updated artifact and I want to bisect um, artifacts. Yeah, for the for the bisecting case, um, something to think about and don't have to solve it now because we're out of time, but whether that can be handled at a layer above us. And so if you've got a build system that's pushing out builds every day, they're going to have individual tags for each one of those builds. And so there might be other ways to solve that that don't need to go all the way down into the reference system to look at that. Um, if it's possible, that saves us some headache. If it didn't, then you know, more work for us. That will go into the tag cluttering thing. Well, tags are always clut already cluttered with a lot of bills today. I'm trying to avoid <laughs> tagging exact, in with a whole bunch exactly, of- Exactly my point. So maybe we have actually uh, you know, identified what the user story is that we're trying to resolve. And with that, I think uh, we, can, we can call this, we can call it a day and move on to submitting a PR. Yeah. Thanks so much, Nisha. And thank you, Lockheed, for volunteering to go through and doing some of that cleanup too. I'm going to yeah take a stab at it this afternoon. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.